Hello everyone, this is Tane from Junior Programmer and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, we will be creating new morphic elements. So as you can see, we will be creating a good kind of dashboard with too much styles. It will have some buttons, a clock, a play and pause button, then some tabs, then a slider to adjust the volume or something, anything that you can say. We will also have a search button in which you can search. And you can use this thing in any of your websites or any other thing. So let's start first of all with the HTML file. So first of all, as usually, we will just display the elements and we will write the elements of the HTML file. Just the basic stuff, the doc type, HTML tags, the some, then some meta tags, then some title and then we'll have to link some sheets, the style sheets. For example, the Google fonts, simple, just copy this and you will get this. We have also have to use some other fonts as you can see uh, I'm I'm importing kit dot font awesome and this is also some other cool fonts that we'll be using and also some icons that we will be required to use in this in this project so you can simply use all of the same lines as you have seen in my code and just import these and you will be good to go to create a basic a pneumorphic elements just like I showed in the start so let's start first of all we've created a class with div and the class is container then another div with components so we'll start with different components different buttons first of all we'll create two buttons uh, which will be the switch buttons just like switch on and switch off two buttons giving them different class switch one and switch two so it is easier for us to style afterwards then we'll create the checkbox for this we'll use the class checkbox and the input id is checkbox because it is of type checkbox as you can see I have written in the type similarly we'll do this for the second for the second checkbox uh, it's pretty much same and one of them has to be checked in the start as you can see and I have written the checked keyword after that after the checkboxes are done we'll move on to the radio buttons so the radio buttons are the buttons in which one of them can be selected at a time so we'll also create two radio buttons giving them a name and a, and a value We'll also give them different classes, for example, like I've given radio 1, radio 2, so it is easier to style afterwards. Then we'll create a button, and the text will be shown as button 1, another button, and the text is button 2. Then we will move on to the clock. Uh, the clock will have another div, which will be within another div, and we'll have other divs of different classes like hand hour, hand minute, hand seconds. Uh, this is all this is all we are also doing this different classes so it is easy for us to style afterwards and we can uh, include much more styling then we'll say is like this we'll create a div a name a name with the class named as chip and then we'll create another div and the class is chip icon then we'll write new morphic design and similarly we will move on and create another div and give it a class of circle so it is like a circle button <clears throat> just like circle button as you have seen in the start then we'll create a form form is basically for any input so this is where you can use the search thing and then we'll create a search button in which the user can en enter the text and then after that you can search we'll also give it a placeholder as search and then we'll have the segmented control it is of the type radio as you can see I've given I've given it some classes and give a and kept it as checked now again I also have another similar kind of thing radio and it is for the second tab the second segmented control it is also for radio as you can see and then like this we have created the third button like this for segmented control and then we'll just create some icons um, we'll getting the icons from the API that I have written in the start the library that we have included um, and then there will be some icons for example icon home account and settings these icons just are there to make it much more uh, pleasing and much more beautiful and then we'll have the slider at the end which you can use for the volume and it will have the classes slider button and it has another class as slider color and the slider tooltip so you'll be able to see this afterwards in the styling that how we make use of different classes so this was the HTML. Now let's move on to the CSS file. CSS is very important for this project because this project basically depends on the CSS and styling. 
So first of all, root is for all the elements. We have given it some basic styling, um, some basic colors, for example, gray and this kind of colors. Then we have for all the elements before and after, we do not want the size to change. That's it why we are saying that before and after it remains the same. Then the HTML tag is styled, then the media on the screen, and then we'll move forwards to the different classes. So first the class components, we're giving it just some basic styling. For example, the width, the height, the box shadow, um, the box radius, display, temperature, um, sorry, temperature, template, and then rows and column and all this kind of stuff. So you can always move these values up and down a little bit um, and you will see that how the style change. Now we'll move into the switch input, switch one and switch two, giving it a width, then switch one label, switch two label, um, giving it a display, width, height, shadow, background, position, cursor, border radius, um, just some styling to make it more beautiful and the switch after like after it is pressed or after it is switched on we have to change the styling a little bit so that we can see that it is switched on we've also included a transition so as you switch it on there's a little bit of transition which shows it's switching on now as we have to do it before and there's the styling the height width and all this kind of stuff now the switch if it is checked um, then the opacity is one this means that it is checked and it, the user can know that it is checked now moving on with the other styles the radio button so first of all just like previously we have done the checkbox input displays none then checkbox one checkbox two both different um, they are both different but the styling is similar for both of them so we can do them like this uh, we can do them on the same for example i'm just using both of those name and styling them at the same time you can do it like this um, this is just some basic styling as I've shown in the previous videos like font, width, um, font size, transition values, shadows, colors. Um, this is pretty much um, self-explanatory from the text that I'm writing but I'm changing. You can always change the colors according to yourself, whatever you're liking and where you're fitting it. After the radio button, we'll move on to the buttons. So as I've done previously, I'll just... Um, give some styling for example the box shadow display and this kind of stuff the colors then again I will do this checked and not checked for almost all of them because once the button is clicked then it is checked then it is non che uh, not checked so we have to give this uh, styling for both of them and then for the labels too as you can see I'm doing this for all of them in this I've also done it for hover so when it hovers the background color is kind is slightly changed and then the before and after labels now the button um, I'm just including some basic styling the width height radius display align items in the center justify content in the center so everything's remain centered now moving on to the clock so for the clock we have the button um, the, we have, we're using the same class as we have defined in the HTML elements so just some styling grid column row like where it has to be placed and then the background and box shadow and all this kind of stuff now similarly we have to do it for hover for it being active then for the buttons underneath them and the buttons when they are hovered over and then the buttons then the secondary button all the buttons then the button within the p and within the p tag is the style and then we're styling the clock now the clock is the same class name that we have used in the HTML. So this is all the styling that you can choose from and you can always make a little bit of changes at, as I am saying you can always make changes and see how it affects the output and then you can do the one that you like or whatever suits for your website or whatever you are making. So this is just the continued styling for the clock for the point because clock has to be styled as there are different hands on the clock representing the hour, minutes and seconds and then the markers of the clock then the shadows all these kind of things to make it more appealing and much more beautiful uh, like this I am doing it for clock and after like after the marker has been done so the styling will change a little bit for example from the top from the left the width the height the position and then the clock marker 1 marker 2 marker 3 marker 4 these are the four markers like the hands and the position will change accordingly so I'm just styling the 
<clears throat> I'm just telling the clock for now the marker one marker two as you've seen now I have not included them all together because there's a little bit, little bit of change for example for some the left value is different and for the other is different so I'm not doing it together and doing it separately for each of them and now moving on to the play button so we'll have the icon the class that we have named there and the styling height weight margin display font size color then the chip class within the p tag font size margin color and then chip close uh, you can remember this that these are all the same classes that we have defined in the html for different elements different tags now the circle it has a grid row and column just like where it has to be placed in its shape and all this kind of stuff now moving on to the form um, we'll have a circle button and in the circle button we're just giving styling for example margin justify content in the center z index background box shadow cursor and position so you can see that there is a quite a lot of styling because there are a lot of different elements and we have to style each element differently so that we can control what the output looks uh, look like so we can have proper control over the output each and everything so that is why the styling seems a little bit more you can simply copy paste the same project and get it from my github repository um, and you'll see that you will be able to make this then you can always make the changes to the values and you'll see the changes and can adjust it for your projects now moving on to the circle circle back circle back paused um, circle back then two then circle back two paused then the form in which we are telling it where to place the form the search form then the form input like the input where the user will write giving it a size it has to be like a rectangle where the user can input the text then different form and family and all this kind of stuff the, uh, the font family is inherited this means that it is will be from the same as the other elements then moving on to the search um, the segmented control um, some simple styling the positioning the height width border these kind of stuff these are pretty much self-explanatory as you can see from the name for example background font family color so you do not need to like go into much details because everything is pretty much self-explanatory and you can just change the values and you'll know that what you are changing and then you can see what has changed and can adjust it now the search icon the icon is the icon that we will place with the search bar just to make it more beautiful and then moving on to styling the segmented control the weight height box shadow border radius display line items position um, just some basic stuff as i've told told you then the segmented control input segmented control input if it is checked and label all these then segmented control one two three all of them that we have defined into the html previously then when the segmented controls are hovered over them then the color changes the segmented control color class it will have some different styling Uh, the different style elements are there for example weight height box shadow then the tab one for example if it is checked then the segmented control the transform the trans transitions transitions are like the simple animations kind of stuff you can you can say then for similarly we are doing for tab two and tab three these are the icons then the icon will place the icons according to the position grid column and grid row display this stuff then the range slider the range slider that we have to display at the end that will be like a volume button you can say we have to style it too then styling the icon account icon home icon settings different styles for example width height box radius box shadow as you can see that i haven't used any of the much complex styling just some simple styling in the css that you can see for example the width height and all this stuff these are again i'm saying pretty much self-explanatory and you can always change and you will know once you have the code and you're writing it yourself you will know that what you are changing and then you will be able to make the changes according to yourself now moving on to the slider box styling it then the slider button then styling the button according to our liking like using this simple stuff for example where tight position display justify content align items then the slider button 
slider button when it is hovered slider button when afterwards we have used it just some simple a little bit of change of styling so we can show the effects of the effects of any input by the user and <clears throat> and to make it much more appealing to you to, uh, to the user for the website or anything where we will place it then the slider tooltip has to be styled using the similar attributes for example position top width height and all this kind of stuff then in the end the keyframes keyframes is like for the animations and just you can use all of this code as mine and then you will be good to start now this project will also need a javascript file just to make it more interactive so first of all i'm just selecting the uh, just selecting the elements using the classes for example hours minutes and seconds we'll use it afterwards as you will see in the code then in the play button we are also selecting the elements using the classes that is why classes are very important we can use them in javascript as well as css to access different elements within the html file similarly for the rate slider we are using the L we are using the class name for example slider box then slider button then slider color so what we are doing is we are controlling the elements from the javascript so first of all we will do with the clock we have to set a time so what we do is we get the date from the built in method date and then we separate the hours minutes and seconds using this formula just some simple stuff and then we just add it and manipulate it so that we can get it in 24 hours and then after that we're giving it a rotation so that it rotates and appears to be rotating on a circular clock so the rotation is the function that will define now and it will transform the value like it will transform the value in the degrees that how much to move it then it will always windows on load mean that it will work after the all of the pages loaded then we'll drag the element like target dot event listener wherever the mouse is mouse says it will listen there and apply the event that what we want to do so for example on mouse move uh, we have defining a we have defined a function so it is a target like where it is where the mouse is placed and then we'll see on what element it is and then we can like check or uncheck the element according to what we want So as you can see I am also making it much more interactive like moving the tooltip when the button moves so the tooltip moves with the button then show the percentage in the tooltip and these kind of stuff this will just make your interface look pretty good and will be more much more attractive and on mouse up uh, on mouse on is that when the mouse is clicked and on the screen so whatever has done has to be undone on mouse up so that is why we have to display the, we have to make a function on mouse up and pretty much reverse all of the things and then in the play button we have to do some of the functionality for example whenever it is clicked and not clicked so when it is clicked the visibility changes and the shadow changes and it is changes so this was all and this is the output that we've been able to achieve the radio buttons as you can see different buttons styled perfectly and giving a very good effect and that you can use anywhere in your project like in your website or anything like that so i hope you enjoyed this video and if you have not liked my channel please like and subscribe my channel and like this video so you can so it gives me much more like motivation to make much more videos and if you have any suggestion that you want me to do please do mention it in the comment box and do not forget to subscribe this channel and i hope to see you in the next video good luck until then